Behind the Counter is sponsored by... Hover.com, domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Hello, everybody. After a two-week absence, we are back on Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is the sensational Jonathan Adler. I'm more astonishing. Than astonishing. <laughs> Not very sensational. The incorrigible Jonathan the incorrigible, Adler. Incorrigible. Incorruptible. Irredeemable. The master of... Adjectives. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Adjectives. So what's going on, sir? You know... We're back at it. We're back at two weeks. We uh, we apologize. I was folks. dead. Yeah, um, I was it. dead, and then uh, then Rich was dead. Yeah, and then we both brought each other back. We from both sat up. Yeah, uh, but we're stronger. By yeah. the way, a happy Passover to Jonathan. Oh, thank yeah. you. Happy uh, Passover, and also a happy <laughs> Easter to me as well. And a happy Easter. Best of both worlds. Today uh, is the day that God killed all the Christian babies and saved the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, what is dead can always be born again. Remember that. Is that also from Game of Thrones? Yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody Slowly becoming, becoming the Game of Thrones recap. So, so. <laughs> this is a quick plug. Watch Game of Thrones, everybody. It's awesome. Um, And that leaked episode, too. Yeah, watch that. Stuff. And they keep leaking it. I remember when... Uh, I hope they do it. When they used to have the shield on FX, and they would leak like the French version would get leaked like yeah. a week and a half. Well, this was because uh, they implemented all this HBO Go stuff, which mm. is fantastic. HBO yeah. Go, like if you're not ta- if you have HBO and mm. you're not using HBO Go, you have everything that HBO has ever produced for yeah, free. Dude. They have like every season of everything. Mm. Uh, Still can't get it on my phone. Time Warner, I don't think is is uh, hooked up yet. Really? Yeah. I got, I got, it was a little bit of a hassle to hook up, but once yeah. it's going, it's awesome. Now it's on Xbox. Do you have it on your phone or do you have it? I have it on my phone. I yeah. have it on my iPad, and I have it on my uh, my Xbox. Awesome. Um, I'm, I don't know if it's on for PS3 yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but which is it's rocking. It looks great. Um, but the reason why the Game of Thrones thing leaked was because in the Netherlands or somewhere they <laughs> they got it a week early for some reason and they're like we're stopping this there's no way no. so of course internet grabbed it pulled it up and mm-hmm. we, we were graced with a wonderful episode I, in my head I imagine that it's it so was, good it was a it was a it was like a like a drive or a DVD on a really high desk and oh. Dinklage walked by it and just like stuck his hand up Mine. and scooped it <laughs> it Mine. was the, the, the night I was downloading it it was so so intense. Yeah. <laughs> like waiting for that thing. Waiting for it to finish down. <laughs> yeah. It was, like, it was like honestly, like you, you know, you know, like when you were a little kid and you were waiting for, you know, uh-huh. when it was suitable for it to be daylight for Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, it was like that. I was like, come on. It's like watching fast paint dry. Come on. <laughs> but it, it, it was worth it. Yeah. Guys, watch Game of Thrones. Read mm-hmm. Game of Thrones. Do everything Game of Thrones. And also get excited. Get excited about the Avengers movie. I'm starting to get excited about it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, if it had more Game of Thrones, it would be a lot better. More Game of Thrones in the what if they would you watch an Avengers movie where they all just sat and watched the first season of Game of Thrones? <laughs> man, I, I there'll be some great commentary. <laughs> some good actors in there, man. I'm sure they're all funny, and I'm sure they love uh, Ned Stark and the mm-hmm. wolves and everything. The th- I, I feel like that would be a good bit, like this, the Thor commentary for Game of Thrones. Stark and Stark, you know, Thor commentary for Game of Thrones. Like, mm-hmm. why? Where's the smashing? <laughs> this guy's not mighty. He is not a mountain. What a knave. Is this your ancestor, Anthony? <laughs> Ned. I will address him as such. So uh, we're back, everybody, and um, it feels good to be back. It feels great uh, to be back. We got a couple of cool things to talk about later on, um, some stuff that we're both huge fans of, and uh, a couple of, like... Uh, Andrew's raising his Rich had a uh, very nice get-together. Oh, yeah, that's for us. I had, I, I had a lot of fun, I want to thank him for inviting me. I thank you for the public acknowledgement, and, man. And, I appreciate and it. And Jonathan was right; it was just like a hip hop concert. <laughs> it was. Um, I, uh, I I also like the fact that um, we have not gone a wrestling free reference episode yet. 
No, it's never. It's never we're, <laughs> we didn't is, mention it. We didn't mention wrestling. This you is, just did. This it is, was implied. This is 28 episodes. And maybe every single one has had some kind of wrestling thing. Everyone. It's all right. Know. By the way, uh, a couple weeks ago, we uh, ran uh, like a little contest on the network uh-huh. where we had a theme play. And you said, if you guess the theme, we'll send you something. Right. Uh, nobody got it right. Cool. We got about 15 responses. Uh-huh. And every one of them was Rich's band. Wow. So I um, responded 15 times. You responded 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get the Rich's band. Wow, my band's also playing tonight at Mr. Beery's. Come check out Mr. Beery's. <laughs> like Come hang Mr. out. Beery's. Come hang out. Nine o'clock. Mr. You can Beer. you can find me in the area somewhere. In the, <laughs> in, if you're in the Greater Queens Bayside area, you may be able to spot me. Mm. What? Uh, it's Mr. Beery's in Hempstead. Oh, I'm going. Yeah, oh, cool. so leaving like, leaving the borough. Leaving the borough. Got to Got to go. Uh, got to go do my thing. Got to pay his patronage to the LI. Opening up for uh, Spiral Architects, the one. Uh, Long Island, true Black Sabbath, King of the North, man. yeah, <laughs> the King one. of the North. So uh, let's talk comic books. Let's talk about comic books. No mm-hmm. news. Yeah, but nothing, uh, nothing that great. Stuff is dropping, and like all types yeah. of like important stuff is about to happen. Uh, so we're kind of in the dark lull time. Yeah. And plus, it, from you know what, from doing this show, kind of noticed that they've really been drawing back on the it's information least, yeah. drip. Yeah, the, the, it's. It's really become a uh, tight butthole when it comes to uh, stuff coming out of the Marvel uh, and DC vault. Very yeah, tight. you know, Very you know tight. what it is. You know what it is. Uh, I think it's it's all it's the fact that fandom is at such a weird level right now because everybody wants to jump on it and everybody mm. wants to be a comic book journalist. Everybody wants to have a comic book blog. Um, for example, both of you are both of us are avid Tumblr users. And how many tumble logs are there about comic books or like mm-hmm. art and like all this stuff, which is great. It's awesome for the genre. But like you said, man, there's no real like like breaking news this is what they're going to do to me besides the Eisner no- Eisner noms uh this week uh which were delicious they're and it was, also very expected too there yeah. a lot of very obvious choices and and like besides that it was like not taking away from the quality of the work yeah like like scanning for me was just like Jim Lee does this Jim Lee does that Rob Liefeld does this check out these two covers of Hawk and Dove and Supreme all right man yeah, it's <laughs> very. It, it, I remember when we like this. Like, will this mm-hmm. guy return? Is this guy, you know, yeah. uh, you know, signing exclusive, exclusive contracts? Something. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not there anymore. No, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of good solid books though for the past couple of weeks that we've been gone. Um, yeah. And also, the season finale of Walking Dead happened. Um, sure did. Which was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, and they released uh, some kind of, something kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if you read it yet. The uh, the Playboy. Released the five pages of uh, Michonne's origin. Very awesome. It was really cool. I, I didn't expect it uh, to go down like that. Can you can you spoil it for us or no? Um, yeah. Yeah. Why not? I don't think I spoiler don't think, alert. I don't think well, the issue's it, out yet, right? Uh, the actual the Playboy issue. It is. It is. Uh, okay. the whole thing is she was a uh, she was She's a lawyer. nurse lawyer. This is lawyer. Lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she was a lawyer, or mm-hmm. had something to do with law. Um, you can Google it while I'm talking. Um, and she, the apocalypse, you know, hits, and she's running around, and mm-hmm. she runs to her boyfriend's place, and her boyfriend is living with her with some jerk off who she doesn't like. That's her be- his, his his best, best friend. friend. Yeah, and uh, she like kind of loses her shit and decides to like walk barefoot somewhere else to her to her apartment, I guess. Yeah, and she decides to take a, a sword off the rack, and she comes back, and the uh, I guess one of them got bit. One of the, either boyfriend mm-hmm. or the friend, and they're both zombies. And uh, Michonne hacks them to pieces, uh, cuts off their arms, cuts off the lower jaw right. of them, ties them up, puts a hood on, and becomes Michonne that we have right. known and love. And she uses these two, you know, the two dudes to basically walk around and you know use them as a deterrent to keep the zombies away. Yeah, because they don't come near. Exactly. So, but the the whole thing is, is she really is kind of like. She lost it. Yeah, she lost her mind. Well, I, I like that whole thing with the, with the sword, where like it wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. Where she was just like, "Thank God, this goofball kept really sharp samurai sword yeah. in his apartment," and you know she hacked her boyfriend and uh, that dude to pieces, and her best friend yeah. to pieces. Yeah. So um, I find it funny that she just kind of like decided like I'm bouncing, like mm-hmm. this is you know I just gotta go back to my place real quick. Just, yeah. Like, sit in the dark with my shoes off for a little while to chill out. Um, yeah, I mean, like that stuff was cool. I like she's one of my favorite characters, and uh, I also really am excited to see what they're doing with um, with the new storyline mm-hmm. uh, in the in oh, the comic man, book man, because uh, 
th- where, where we left off, I think the last one we talked about was them reaching the place, and then the issue came out when we had our, our uh, two week hiatus where uh, it didn't it went down completely in a in a different direction. Like my call was that they were going to be religious freaks who lived there for the whole time, but the reality is that it's a functional town. It's a functional you know? town. It really it's like pretty far advanced. Mm-hmm. So the Waco theory is out the window. Uh, so far, yeah, so far. Uh, the big deal is that it's very, very. It basically looks like a, like you know a town that would that function in the Wild West. Right. You know, there's a you know Jesus is not the actual leader. Right. There's another guy, like Gary or something mm-hmm. like that, that is the leader of the town, and you know Rick very hesitantly walks in, people mm-hmm. rocking spears. It's like it just looks like it's a regular everyday town, and then. This dude comes running out of nowhere saying that someone's been captured, mm-hmm. um, and the only way we can save her is this. And he stabs the boss of the town. Right. He's like, you got to stop. If I don't do this, then she's going to die. And Rick, of course, being the man that he is, he steps in. Tackles him. Tackles yeah. this dude. Like, grabs him, with, grabs a blade with his one good hand. He's bleeding all over the place mm-hmm. and ends up, you know, killing this dude. And so, in pure self defense, because the yeah. guy, he was like, he was pleading with him, like, stop, man, just stop, stop, stop doing it. this. And, well, then the, the guy is also screaming to everyone else, like, you know, let me do this or Crystal dies. Yeah. And yeah. they're talking about some, some dude, uh, like Neiman or something like mm-hmm. that, who is, is this other, like, I guess, another leader of another community right. that they're. That they're have some deal with that they're not keeping up with this side, this side right. of the bargain. Yeah, so it's it's awesome. I can't wait. It to see was what happened. great. The panel, I look like the the last panel, that deadpan shot of Rick covered in blood and the entire town circling him. Just killed this dude. And like his guys are looking at him like, oh great, and Jesus is looking at him like, oh boy, and he was just like, what? I just got here, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Yeah, but he saved their leader. He did. He didn't save their leader. He's he dead. Did. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. So now he's the leader. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sure there's other people. No, I'm sure there's other people. And then they're gonna they're gonna eliminate each other off the island. <laughs> well, the next the next storyline after this is wherever, Survivor. whatever, whatever. Like this wraps up this. Uh, the next couple of issues will wrap up the. Um, was like ninety five, I think. This yeah. Issue. So this will wrap up uh, the what's the name of the storyline? I forgot. A man. greater, a gr- uh, larger world. Yeah. And then the next one is something to fear, which is has very mm-hmm. violent. Dark covers, so a lot of bad crap mm-hmm. is about to happen, um, and we're leading up to the always monumental milestone issue of a hundred. I, I can't believe that, man! It's so awesome. It's yeah. so cool. It's it's like for me as a fan, it's um, I enjoy the fact that I picked up the first issue the day it came out on a whim. Nope, not me. Because it, you know, I was like, oh, it's a cool like, it was like, a, like a, it's like a like a dude on the cover, read nothing about it, picked it up, brought it home, and I was like, I want to read everything now. And I, I've been with it since like day one. You yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I think I got into. I think I picked up the first trade, and then after that, I was buying it regularly. Yeah, that was my dream last night, by the way. The zombie apocalypse. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I had a wait. I had way too many Nyquils, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I had a dream where I was Rick. Did and you have both hands? I had both hands, and I was driving a car, and what happened was I realized that if I'm knocked out, the zombies ignore me. Mm. So <laughs> the guy, I was in a car with some random guy, mm-hmm. and uh, he before he sacrificed himself, he punched me in the head, mm-hmm. and he knocked me out, and he made me live. Mm-hmm. That's more and, of a comedy. And the cop, one of the cops became like a, like a crazy leader, like the governor, uh-huh. and throughout the dream, the other guy was saying, who are you now, John Laurinaitis? That's weird. And I woke up just when that happened. And he was wearing a white suit. <laughs> That's all uh, right. Weird. Highly recommend um, not having nightmares. Not having nightmares and going and seeing someone you can talk about your problems with. By the way, my theory mm. on, on their survival still stands. I think they should just cage in the community. You're gonna see this. You'll you'll see you'll all mm. these theories will all play out and you'll see the the, the, the flaw in them. Yeah. 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 It's happened. They've caged in communities. That's what the prison storyline's gonna yeah, be. Yeah, but it's very caged then. Extremely caged. Yeah. Um, extreme. Extreme. So, and uh, Extreme is back. Now. <laughs> kind of, they are. Uh, Bloodstrike came out last week. I wish I, I didn't read, read it. I, I wish read I read it. it. I wish, you know, I, I had no idea it came out. I'm really far behind on the imagery launch. I, I like, part of me kind of. I'm like two issues like, behind on Profit. Yeah. Um, I haven't read Glory. Uh-huh. Um, Supreme, I'm like two issues behind. I can I think part of me condemns him for like because we're the demographic yeah of like we were 15 when this happened and yeah. now we're, we're 30 okay here's my money you know take it just take my money if they do if they do like an awesome young blood I, you know 
Forget the king. forget Watchmen and putting grunge in a Superboy comic book. Yeah. You know, give us give us an awesome young blood written by Brian Azzarello. But young blood's <laughs> not even a property that, know, that should be even played with. It just so the characters are stupid. Uh, like you can do some like cool like off kilter mm, stuff with it, but it's yeah. just like it's young blood, dude. It's yeah. Like, You've got Die Hard. That's about it. That's well, all I want to see. Shaft. And Bedrock. Bedrock. I like Bedrock. I don't like Bedrock. Um, so uh, another major thing that came out this week, which is gonna we're going to dedicate a little bit of time to before we get to the other thing that we're going to dedicate more time to, is uh, <laughs> Avengers X-Men number one finally came out. And Dropping. Yeah. Day early. The day early. and For some a week early. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Uh, last week was the release of Avengers. Uh, zero. Zero. Yeah. Avengers X-Men zero. Uh, which was a very Scarlet Witch, very Hope centric, yeah. uh, which was rocking. It was a good issue. It was a really good issue. My favorite part was uh, Vision crying. Yeah, Vision mm-hmm. just Vision had a really emotional week last week. Well, because he's like the fact that, that that to bring people up to speed, like this is Bendis's swan song pretty much with the Avengers, um, for the most part, right? Yeah. And you know, from Avengers disassembled, which which was panned by a lot of people. I really dug. It. I know you really dug it. Um, you know, for killing all these characters and all this stuff. And this was, if you think about it, this was a very long time ago um, in terms of when the issues came out. Now, uh, Vision has been around in a f- different form on the Young Avengers, but now Tony Stark actually put back the Vision that was ripped in half right. because of his crazy-ass wife. The true Vision, yeah. So now he's like an emotional android. It's like, what like, has happened to me? He's basically like Dark Knight now. Like, like yeah. what did you do? Tell me what you did. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, where's his father? Where's Magneto? Where was this guy? And that was an awesome. That movie. was an awesome scene. He basically just mm-hmm. he basically threatens Magneto mm-hmm. and says like, you know, where is he at? You know, where's your daughter at? It's like, you know, it's like I, you know, I tear you apart, all mm-hmm. this stuff. And he basically just grabs his heart from the inside. And he's like, I'll rip out your heart. Tell me where your daughter is. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I, you know, she doesn't want anything to do with me. That's it. Yeah. And then. Magneto beats crap out and throws him. <laughs> he's like, that was like a really cool bit where he's like, don't ever forget that I can destroy you at a whim. Yeah. You know? And then what's awesome is like, the, the, this all happened like in Avengers, like 24.1 or whatever it is. Yeah. And it ends with like him, Vision coming back to Avengers Mansion after this like long day of just like recouping his losses and mm-hmm. everything. And he goes back and Captain America's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And mm-hmm. he's like, He's like, what? What's wrong with you? He's like, what's going on with you? And Vision, uh, and Vision just like breaking down and crying. It's just like tough day, bro. Yeah, he like, was like, rough. Hey, buddy, you feel like you're a man at a time? <laughs> I came from 1940. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and then like he also did the reconciliation with She Hulk, and all yeah. that. And he pretty much brought the speed with like M Day and like all this other stuff. And uh, Avengers X Men number one plays off a lot of the uh, like the remnants of. Uh, the Phoenix Force, you know, Jean Grey dying, Phoenix right. Force is coming back. You have the Scarlet right. Witch stuff. Um, you the the first issue, I really dug it. It was a good taste of what was to come. It's a total teaser. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you know, you're setting up what's gonna mm-hmm. be happening. I mean, you have the Avengers on one side saying like, "Oh snap, the Phoenix Force is coming." Mm-hmm. Let's alert the government. Let's get together. Very Civil Warish, right? Uh, and then you have this great moment of. Of uh, you know, uh, Cyclops training Hope, uh, getting her ready really hard, and yeah. thinking, and also thinking that possibly this could be, if Hope is the Messiah, that this may be the moment that the Phoenix will actually instead of destroy, will actually create rebirth and bring the mutants back and bring the mutants back. Yeah, and there's also um the thing that I, I really which Scarlet yeah. Witch is the with the ironic the ironic part is that mm-hmm. it's, which is, I think Scarlet Witch is gonna be part of this is that she does have the ability to restore power. Right, which he did with Richter on X Factor. Right, right. So there's, there's definitely like we don't know yet if, because the way that Hope works, she siphons the power off of whatever is near her. Right. So she could be siphoning the power off of Phoenix, but she may not be the source. Right. Of where the Phoenix is going, mm-hmm. maybe going to say like the Scarlet Witch or something. Emma sure. Frost, who knows? I, you know what? Like I have like I have like a weird thing that it's going to be Cyclops. Oh, you know, so weird. because I it would be weird, but um. The fact that you know he's he's training her so hard, he's got such a hard on for the Phoenix Force and everything. Is you think he's gonna bite it? You think he's gonna bite in this one? I don't think he's gonna bite it. Um, but 
they keep teasing the fact that, you know, everybody for the past few issues of, of a lot of X-Men books are saying, like, dude, you're starting to sound like Magneto. And in this issue, Magneto was like... He's all bad. He's like, yeah. Like, dude, you're starting <laughs> to sound like me. I yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's, like, he's like, I'm not militant. I'm just, I'm trying to protect blah, 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 blah. Captain America shows up. I think he's going to be, because of the connection with Jean Grey, I think it's going to be get attached to Cyclops. But, again, they've already done that with uh, Cypocalypse. Yeah, when they did that. Um, I don't want to see him go evil. No, because it did. You know, it's he. He's come a long way as a character. This is mm-hmm. a guy who was. I'm not. I'm someone who wasn't the biggest Cyclops fan in the world, and mm-hmm. I think they brought him to a great area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the relationship that he has with Wolverine now is, is fascinating. Yeah. Um, I love the scene like where Cap hits. Uh, goes at Wolverine. He's like, you know, can I depend on you? Can you be my bro? Mm-hmm. And he's like, shit. Like I kind of have to. Yeah. And I don't like this guy anyway. Like you know. I gotta do this, like, and I like the fact that when Cyclops faces off against Captain America, he's like, you know, we're our mutant experts. He's like, who Wolverine? Yeah, like, Wolverine's your freaking your mutant expert. <laughs> that guy with the clothes, like Sorry, Professor dude. Wolverine. Yeah, but like you know, that's, mm-hmm. it's it's a really there's a, like a lot of stuff can happen. I think there's a, it's you know, uh, this is one of those things that you can just sell on the title alone. It's oh, Avengers yeah. versus X Men. Mm-hmm. So like, I think a lot of big stuff is gonna happen on this, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be very surprising. Like. I was just I I was reading before you came over and we got this thing together, and I was like, you know what? Like this, they have everyone who under the Marvel banner, all the architects yeah. working on this book. This is gonna be major, yeah, yeah, major stuff. It's gonna have a lot of repercussions. It's gonna lead into something because like the Marvel never disappoints with leading into bigger and better things. Yeah, you know, and we have no idea where this is going. Yeah, uh, and and it's I, I really dug the first issue. My my favorite panel was um, Cyclops just. Hauling off on Cap and you know Cap saying like listen like I, where he was like you know we have to take her and he's like I'm sorry man just get off my island and he's like it wasn't a question and then <laughs> just blast nails him. him blast him into the water and then you have like the you know the Avengers coming out and the X Men showing up and it's gonna be some cool matchups you know you're gonna see some yeah. awesome visual stuff you're gonna see some cool storyline stuff you have a couple of wild cards with Beast and Wolverine yeah. um, except except in this week's comics Beast gets murdered in every single book I've read. That's true. <laughs> Plus, they have this weird, little weird moment. Um, let me see if I can pull it up while we're talking. They're, they're setting up as they're, as they're like getting everyone together and telling like the government like, oh, you know, this is, you know, what's going on? This is the deal. Uh, they set up a group of X-Men or Avengers to basically be like the Suicide Squad to like watch the Phoenix for coming. Right. So they're off the board. When it comes to the actual fight, and I'm, I'm going to pull them up right now, mm. um, the dudes that they appointed to do this are Thor, Ms. Marvel, War Machine, Vision, Beast, Captain Britain, Protector, and Valkyrie. So they're not going to be involved in this fight. Right. At all. That's a lot of heavy hitters, too. Yeah, well, taking Thor off the thing. <laughs> Thor is a big one. Yeah. Um, plus, Vision is, is going to be Ultron anyway, so. Mm. Um, I think uh, I'm I'm almost positive War Machine's gonna die mm-hmm. in the next issue of Iron Man. I think there's gonna be some deaths. There's gonna be some deaths and some returns. You know. Um, do you think it's gonna lead up to Jean Grey coming back? No. No, at all. I don't want it. Why not? Why don't I want mm-hmm. Jean Grey coming back? Yeah, it's fine without it. I think that um, it would be a little. Only if you start hooking up with uh, Wolverine. It would, yeah. Yeah. That would make sense, but I think it would stop the fight dead in its tracks for Cyclops because he's so yeah passionate about everything and so militant at this point. And, yeah. like, you know what? He's he's banging out a hot blonde chick, yeah. but it's not Jean Grey. And yeah. they always address that. Like, listen, yeah. it's not Jean Grey. He, she comes out in the Phoenix Force or if whatever. If it's her, the fight stops for him. Yeah. You know? No, I agree with that. I, I just, I just, I don't. It's been 10 years. Yeah. It's a long death. It has been 10 years. Especially for a major character like that. Jane Grey, yeah. there's a long time that someone's been dead for her. Yeah. And that's not like, like, like not talking about like Becky or Becky, Bucky or like uh, yeah. or Uncle Ben, but like that's a long time to be dead. And I think so much has developed since she's been gone that mm-hmm. I feel like it, if she's back, they're just kind of falling to the same stuff. Right. And like Cyclops really is. I, I love the Emma Frost Cyclops thing because it challenges each other. Yeah. All the time, it's just it's a really great dynamic. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. Like the only way I'd be happy with it is if like she's like stayed far, far away 
from Cyclops, and she actually started hooking up with Wolverine. Don't that would also take Wolverine out of the fight. So awesome. Take Wolverine out of the fight completely. Oh, completely. Well, that, that was yeah. a that was a great moment in Schism when they, the two were duking it out. Is that they both brought up Gene, mm. and they both like that's like the moment where like you know, screw you that that's it. Yeah. That's the that's what we can't agree on. Like yeah, because Wolverine's whole thing is like I loved her to death, and she didn't love you back. Like you're an animal. Well, yeah. You're a tool bag. You're yeah. a, you're a tool bag. So it it's it, the buildup is is awesome, and you and you can tell um you know there's a lot of fervor uh going into it right now, and and dude, it's the Avengers versus the X Men. Yeah, it's like it's it's the most marquee you know characters you got right now. Yeah, you haven't had this in forever. Which is straight true. up brawling. Yeah, like, you know, like it's this is starting out like right off the bat as a brawl. Yeah. Straight up brawling, and also, um, it's really it's really good that Marvel hasn't done a mega event like this in forever, where it involves everybody. And mm-hmm. I, I a, a little moment that I loved about it was the uh, mm-hmm. the Namor uh, like narration during the uh, the Cap uh, Cyclops yeah fight. Uh, he's like he's like oh you know that's Cap's gauntlet man like he's like like it's gonna go down yeah. <laughs> he's like ready he's like yeah if I know him better than anybody else and I do <laughs> it's the voice I'm gonna give Namor <laughs> it's not Namor's voice the uh, what's his name Will Ferrell from um, from uh, the Ben Stiller movie where he played uh, Magato or whatever oh yeah okay yeah, like, oh, I gotta remember the name of that movie yeah. um. Yeah, Zoolander. Zoolander. That's the voice I'm going That's the name or voice from now on. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'll go with that. I know Captain America better than anybody. anybody. <laughs> Hello, Namor. That's not how Namor talks. <laughs> <laughs> and he still smells like fish. Um stinks. You're gonna see the end of this is gonna is gonna um is gonna actually fix the DC relaunch. <laughs> 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 Somehow, some way. The, it's gonna make it streamlined. The the Phoenix Force is so powerful that it, it it's gonna cross the company. That'd be wonderful. You know you know who's in the Phoenix Force? Justice League. Oh boy. <laughs> the real Justice League. Would you would you shit your pants if that was the reveal? Like like we kept this secret for five years. And we're not we, only we, are we doing Avengers X Men, we're, we're doing we're, we're, Marvel DC. I would like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean if they were if they were able to keep that quiet, which is impossible. Yeah. Uh, I would lose my mind. Right, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would lose my mind. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea, but I, mm-hmm. I just want to <laughs> <laughs> Cyclops blasts away the Phoenix Force. Wow. Last panel, Phoenix Force clears, big red ass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> fan fiction, bro. Get oh, on. Oh, boy. We're gonna, next week, we're going to come and we're going to do uh, fan fiction poetry. I think so. Kevin Nash shows up. <laughs> it's not Kevin Stop Nash. Stop it. <laughs> It'll never be a return to the NWO. <laughs> um so yeah I, i'm I'm really i haven't really been this excited about a crossover in forever yeah it's it's good know. i'm i'm very much looking forward to it mm-hmm. i'm looking to see they, they said that uh i was reading um axel Lonzo always does these uh these like uh discussions on every for every friday so mm-hmm. i always read them before we come on like on air he's talking about how this has like three major acts um mm-hmm. And it's going to be interesting to see what this is kind of leading into. Because all you know about this is, is Phoenix mm-hmm. and that the Avengers are fighting the X-Men. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. like the bare bones of this conversation. And you have the uh, the teasers that they're throwing in the issues are just like little panels of, of heroes fighting heroes. Yeah. You know, there's like a rogue, uh, She-Hulk. That's for some reason, the only one I can remember. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it was like Thing and mm-hmm. Namor was like the first issue. Magneto and like Iron Man. I think you also have the wild card of Nova being in a coma. Yeah, and even though you don't know which Nova it is, yeah. it might be the younger brother. True, and also it might be uh, the return of a Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is coming back. Yeah. Well, we know, we know for a fact that Captain Marvel is going to be um, Carol, Dan- Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers? Yeah. yeah. She's in Captain Marvel. What do you think is going to happen to uh, Novara? I think he's gonna die. You think so? Oh, yeah, I think so. I don't know, man. I think. Uh, I, I, I think they have. I think he's like a century where they have no idea what to do with him. Like they, they, there was a really good idea, and then they just kind of just dropped the ball with him. They haven't. Um, do not like. You know what it was? He's so far away from what he was in, like, um, in uh, in Grant Morrison's book. Yeah, like he's kind of serious now, mm. and he was kind of like a douchebag, like rebel dude. Yeah, you know, shooting his laser guns, just being a space man, being a space bug. Uh, what I what I. I really want to see. I, I don't want to see him go because uh, I think this is one of the first times that you see the interaction between Tony and Tony Stark and um, and the Protector Novar. Yeah. Like, hey, listen. Like, he's like, we'll why are you shit. like, why are you messing with my stuff? He's like, yeah. listen, dude. I am from a very advanced 
galactic civilization. You know, we yeah. almost conquered everything. I, I think I know what I'm doing. He's like, don't touch my stuff, dude. Like, Cut the market. Tell him to start touching my stuff. <laughs> no. A booming voice. Um, so uh, looking forward to you. are going to be hearing us talking about that uh, for the many weeks Almost to come. Almost every single week. Yep. We're going to dedicate a little bit of time to it. Yeah. Uh, but the rest of the episode, we're going to dedicate to um, the boys. The boys. Uh, Garth Ennis, uh, Derek Robertson, uh, a few other gentlemen. Rounding the bend. And uh, the boys is uh, one of Garth Ennis' brainchild uh, that started in D.C. Uh, was put out to pasture Brought back by Dynamite, and this is the penultimate storyline yes. that just wrapped up. So, yes. uh, what is this, issue, issue 65? This is issue 65. By the right. way, cue me for the uh, images. Okay. okay. Um, so, did you give him, boys, 60, yeah, I gave, the yeah. cover? Uh, I did not give him the cover. Mm. Uh, so, boys 65, it will be... Um, leading into something else, but this is the culmination of a gigantic storyline that they've almost been building up since day one. Yeah. Um, to familiar film, uh, familiarize your, you guys with who the boys are, they're essentially these um, just not superheroes, but they're super powered, and they're there. CIA. You know, CIA. Yeah. To take on uh, when you know, basically when the superheroes get out of control, mm-hmm. you know, and it's their job. In this world, basically, gov- uh, the government has licensed out superheroes from a company called Vote American right. who owns all the combo companies and has created these weapons of mass destruction that are superheroes that are easily marketable. But the problem is a lot of them are complete and utter psychopaths. And total jerk-offs. Yeah, just like the worst, like douchebags. Mm. There hasn't been like a likable super character in the story yeah. at all. It is, you know, Garth Ennis' entire... Uh, you know, critique of the superhero genre. Right. Um, a lot of it is very tongue in cheek. A lot of it is very ham fisted. Yeah. Um, but as we went along with the story, um, uh, sure, there's a lot of sex jokes. There's, there's a, a ton of violence. And the language is out to the wall. But as you got deeper into the story, it gets just like more and more the reason why we love and we come back to Garth Ennis yeah. over and over again, and why he is one of the masters of the long form. Oh, absolutely. Method. He can go from uh, completely off the wall, funny, he can do silly, he can do, like you said, brutality, drama, and everything, but it will always make sense at the end, uh, especially with character arcs. Yeah. You know, he, he does a, a, a beautiful character arc for everybody that, that he's written long form, um, especially these guys, you know, and uh, like we were saying, they, this is them combating essentially the... In this world, the that version of the Justice League, yeah, you know, and the main villain is like a a, a Hyperion and a Superman combined, pretty yeah, much, you know, Homelander. His name's Homelander, and he's got like, you know, stars and stripes on him and everything, and he's the de facto leader because he's the most powerful. And this guy does tons of messed up stuff, really, really messed up stuff. Um, but this also issue, has also has sex with Captain America, right? Which they reveal in this issue that he actually got his his genes from. Um, his uh, the Captain America of this world's right genes, right? So it was the Super Soldier Serum, yeah, creating all the, rest of the superheroes, yeah. So, um, take us through what happens to this issue, man. A fantastic issue. This is definitely book of the week. That's why we're dedicating yeah. so much time to it, it. It was it was really impressive. So, uh, basically, Void American, which is the company that runs the entire show, don't really know what's going on because Homelander is losing his mind and has started basically. He surrounded the Earth. With base or the major cities with like groups of super superheroes, like unionize them and saying like we're gonna strike against, we're gonna take what's ours. Right. These are people who in this world have totally messed up. Like nine eleven, they killed mm-hmm. entire planes of people. Yeah. They're just disasters of, of people. So in this issue, uh, Butcher, the main character, who went through a really a great deal of bad things with Homelander, right. he has a personal grudge against him because. Uh, he met this beautiful girl. He had a life of violence. Uh, comes from the British Army, and he got involved with this girl. And then during a vacation, he saw superheroes for the first time. And I guess while he was out, uh, she was raped by Homelander and impregnated. And then one day she she hit her pregnancy. She one day she, uh, basically the baby has burst from her. Yeah, and he had to fight this baby and kill it and mm-hmm. his wife is dead as well so yeah. he has a big problem with them is this a right. scene with fighting the baby? not yet no no that's no, no. actually the the birth of the homelander 
because the same yeah. thing happened to him because he was he was grown in a tube pretty much, you know. Yeah. So, I, I, so in this issue, the butcher basically walks his way over to the White House because mm. uh, the Homelander has decapitated the current president, the current president, mm. and uh, we can queue up the first. Uh, the and you first also shot. you also have the uh, the like the United States Marines at the gates of the White House, ready to see what Butcher does, and he just goes yeah. in on his own because he has complete authority at this point. And the F 16s are being launched right. at the rings of superheroes, mm. saying like, "No one is taking our jobs." Yeah. So let me uh, let me see if I can follow along. I'll play that play along. So the first scene we got right now is Butcher with crowbar in hand, meeting up with Homelander, holding the head of the president. Right, pretty freaking badass. So they start going to do some exposition. They start talking about the essence of the the seven and where these guys come mm-hmm. from. Um, the next shot we have is the actual birth of the Homelander, which he was born into this crazy, you know, like into like a basically a lab. And they knew that they were like, you know, basically he was built with a nuclear bomb next to him. This yeah. nuclear bomb to stop him was another superhero that was developed. Right. To if he a Homelander, Homelander ever got out of control, that they would unleash his person on. Which was the the big reveal yeah, in this issue. This guy yeah. named Black Noir, yeah. who is like the Batman character. Right. Now the weird thing about Black Noir is he's basically just a character just cloaked all in black, featureless, and just mm-hmm. makes like a <laughs> noise. Yeah. Uh, he basically the only thing he's really done so far is uh, during the one of the miniseries he came up to Huey, who is one of the main characters, uh, one of the regular guys, uh, stuck a finger up his ass and said, "Good soldier." Yeah, <laughs> and he wouldn't tell anyone about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eventually, they leak uh, a bunch of really bad things that happen. You can cue the next one. Uh, bad things that uh, Mr. Homelander has done, including right. like eating babies and. And meanwhile, wh- like while this is happening, Huey's on the phone with uh, Mother's Milk, and Mother's Milk is telling him the story of, you know, Black Noir isn't who you think he is. Yeah, he's know? like, you no, know, they're kind of, they're revealing that Black Noir is this 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 weapon that mm-hmm. has waited all of his life to take out Homelander. Right. And now this public thing happens where they say like, oh, Homelander has done all these terrible, terrible things. Mm-hmm. So. Homelander has been this other guy, Black Door, has been realizing, you know what, I'm put on earth to take out this guy. I'm never gonna be the one to have the fun. To have the fun mm-hmm. that can take him out. So they start into like between the two narratives of like Huey learning about it and what's going on in the White House, you get this really creepy moment. You can procure the next one of of like him showing up, making this weird noise. Is that the yeah. one? And the next one with him taking his mask off. So basically this guy is the clone of Homelander. Right. And Homelander has not even mm-hmm. been crazy. Homelander is thought he's crazy. Yeah. And he's accepted he's crazy. Well, I know he, he, he gave the speech to Butcher saying, like, listen, you can show me this. Stuff. I don't even remember. I don't remember. I don't remember any, any of this stuff. But I'm sure I did it because who else would do it, you know? Yeah. But this great, mm-hmm. it's a great reveal because it's not that he's schizophrenic. Mm-hmm. It's that this other psychopath has been running around doing all these really terrible things. I'm sure Homelander has done his share mm-hmm. of terrible things, but... The worst of it has been the Batman character. Yeah. Which is freaking rocking. He was still the Superman up until, um, do we have the panel where um, he he lunges at him saying, yeah. like, you messed up. Next one, the next one. Yeah. Yeah, basically saying, <laughs> like, you made me think I was crazy. And they have a, yeah, and you see Butcher in the corner, and he's like, I gotta go. Yeah, Butcher, Butcher basically hightails. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm out of here. This is yeah. not what I expected. Runs out, runs over to the White House. He's like, boys, get ready. We're going to shoot. We have one target. Shoot this target. Blow mm-hmm. him away. Do whatever you do. Unload your clips. And he's like, "Hey, what are you British or something?" And this is my, my actually my favorite panel of the whole book. Is the next one. It's like, I'm, I'm like British. <laughs> yeah, like I'm British, dude. So they tear this guy's. Uh, basically, Black Noir comes out holding a chunk of Homelander left, mm-hmm. which is the next panel. And they just unload on this dude. It's just so awesomely violent. Go on to the next one. And his dude is still getting up, getting up, walking. Yeah, un- completely unrelenting, awesome. Like this is where Garth Ennis does the best comic violence. Yeah, you know? it's really over the top. And it's like, holy shit, this is the guy who's like really done those bad shit. So Butcher like gets you know gets off his tank, goes over, and he walks over with the friggin' crowbar, and he's talking to him. He's like, you know what? I, c- I don't even know if you can hear me. I don't know if you can you know understand what I'm doing. And we have it up. The next one. Do the next one. Pops the top of his dome off with a crowbar. Where's the, where the dome popping? Yeah. Like, I can't see. And then he says, like, he grabs, uh, what's the next one? 
grabs a fistful of brain and says, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know what's in there, but I'd like to think that this is the part of your brain that, that you know that you did what you did to me. And he squishes his brain in his hand. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. Like, really awesome, brutal stuff. Uh, dude, this is like, this hit yeah. it. This, like, so much goes on in this issue. Reveals. Uh, violence. Um culmination of like you know 65 issues worth of, of story yeah. um right after he crushes his brain which is great huey comes over to him and then he just kind of like says you know like Can I have him in a mate yeah and he cried and butcher cries his eyes out because he's like the girl that he was with was you know very nonviolent, mm-hmm. very cool chick she changed him she changed him she yeah. made him for the better he came from a really brutal household and he's crying his eyes out because he's like I know you'd hate all this shit. Like, all this yeah. stuff I'm doing. He's crying, he's crying. He's like, and you're going to hate what I'm about to do next. And it's just yeah. the end. And you're like, what next? Yeah, exactly. And, like, this is Garth Ennis. This is why, honestly, before Walking Dead came out, Preacher was the book mm-hmm. that I could always plop into any man's hand yep. and say, read this. You will love the ever-loving shit out mm-hmm. of this. And, like, this proves it. This is a book that has pretty much harbored on the idea of like hokey, jokey, dick joke, fart jokes. This guy's name is Love Sausage. Yeah. And then he still brings it, brings the violence, and brings an unbelievably great, serious, powerful ending to a story arc. Oh, fantastic. This Tremendous. Was, this was a masterpiece of an issue. Mm-hmm. This is a single issue. You've had like we be, this we very rarely do this. We mm. walk panel through panel, and we left out a ton of other stuff. There's yeah. all, but there's so much great stuff happening. In this this was such a rewarding, rewarding. It reading. was man. It was it was a uh, when I was reading it, I was uh, reading it uh, before I went to sleep the other night, and um, I j- I literally jumped out of bed, and like my girlfriend was sitting next to me. She's like, "You're all right." I was like, "It's the guys." The- yeah, not the guy, and there's like this crazy shit's happening right now. Um, it's it's really hard to explain, but it's such a fantastic book. I really encourage everybody to pick it up from the first trade up until it's now, and ride, like where it's man. going, and hopefully it gets collected at some point in like a really nice couple of volumes. It's but no reason not to, you know. Like I was I was telling you before, I think the next story arc is it may be a suicide run for Butcher because Butcher makes it out of this alive. Yeah, you know, and like he says, you know, yeah, you didn't think that the issue before. Right. When he was walking in for the Homelander, you thought that was it for him. With a crowbar, and that's it, you know? Um, And you also, the fact that he goes, listen, like, you know, he's talking to his dead girlfriend, and he's like, you know, you're going to hate what I do do next. But before that, he was like, I don't know, I didn't do that for you, I did that for me, you know? Because, like, he needed, and it was like, if you read um, Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker, which was his miniseries. His origin. Um, the origin of the butcher, you will see that like he was like a really rough and tumble, like worst of the worst bad dude, like the guy who could kick everybody's ass, and he did. He'd go go out and get completely wasted, you know, uh, clear a bar out. Ultimate soldier, you know, and then the girl ships him into shape, becomes awesome, takes care of his family, and then you know becomes like the leader of this awesome team. And now it's kind of like that darkness is gonna come out. One more time for like the last swan song of this dude, you know, and what it's gonna be. Mm. And you still have also um, Mallory, the uh, the Nick Fury type character, right? Uh, he's still lurking about mm-hmm. too, which I'm sure he's gonna have some type of impact on this. But like, this was the big seven. Yeah. The other guys are who's left of the seven? The deep? Uh, the, I'm not really sure. Like, there's barely like no one really of yeah. of note. Unless they all got wiped out, and they may have all got wiped out. I think Maeve got killed. Maeve got de- yeah. Maeve yeah. got killed. Aid train is done. Um, the deep may be alive. Yeah. The Martians fucking dead. Yeah. Uh, which was that was the moment that really like the I think really held the boys up was mm. there's this wonderful issue where they're they're investigating like the Martian Manhunter character who's just mm. like some jerk off in a in like a an orange jumpsuit. Right. Um. It, he they got some information the boys got some information on him and they decided not to use it right because they didn't want to go after seven yet they said you know what we're not ready for it mm-hmm. it's not the time so they held back on it and just to have spite the martian manhunter character he kills uh butcher's dog right right and he just like he sees the dead dog at the bar mm-hmm. and butcher's like you know hold, hold on a minute mate and he walks over and he goes to the whorehouse that that he frequents, right? Yeah, he frequents, 
and he just grabs him by the throat, holds him up against mm-hmm. the wall, and stabs him over and over again, repeating, like, why'd you kill my dog, mate? Yeah. Why'd you kill my dog? And it was just like, this is Ennis. Yeah. This is why I read Punisher Max. Mm-hmm. This is why I read Preacher. This is why I've always been on everything on board for everything this guy's mm-hmm. done, whether it be a war story, whether it be a superhero story, whether it be about a guy with two guns. He always kills it. Oh, absolutely, man. He is a he, he is one of the true masters mm-hmm. when it comes to this type of story. I'm excited to see what he's going to do after Boys, man. Oh, yeah. I think it's, it's going to go to sleep for a little bit, and you're going to have something truly fantastic again, because this was just like an epic. Preacher was an epic. You know, Preacher will yeah. always be one of my favorite comic books of all time. Well, we're, you know? we're blessed that we're getting the Nick Fury Max right. out of him, yeah. which is could be his next project for the most part. I mean, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing another, like, 100 issues of Nick Fury and Max. Yeah, that, that would be fantastic. I honestly, like, I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, who would I really like to see this guy write mainstream? And I want to see uh, Ennis Batman. Yeah. Because you can, Never happened. you can throw him in an Ennis world where every, like, if you want a really screwed up Gotham City, have Ennis write it. Yeah, I don't think he likes Batman, though. No. I think he think he. I, I think that's the problem why he's never really written Batman. I think he mm-hmm. doesn't like the character. Ah, who would I want him to do? <laughs> yeah, can I really think of like yeah. mainstream wise, like because no one is he does. You know, every every war story I ever picked up from him mm-hmm. has been amazing. Yeah. Um. Even um the stuff he was doing with uh, with Dynamite too the um where like, they they would do the three issue yeah, yeah yeah that's what I'm talking about like those like it would be like you know the the Night Witches which is about like the female right, like right. Russian like you know fire pirate. Fire pilots. I thought you were talking about the war stories he did. That stuff for is great too. Like well DC he has for Vertigo. Yeah, he has he has such a strong love for World War Two stuff. Um and he writes a great war story. Um, you know, like they did uh like in the war those war stories, like one of my favorites, like Johan's Tiger. Oh yeah. Um there's so many good, good Garth Ennis stuff. Like I also did that awesome, I think, Red Baron miniseries, right? Yeah. You know what it is with him is is that I think when Boys came out, a lot of people feel like kind of felt the that he went the way of like a Mark Miller, where he's kind of selling himself on the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The audacity. Right. You know, like going for like. The, the over the top stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the dick jokes and everything like that. But mm-hmm. like this dude. <sighs> but you know what it is, man? He has such a body of work that like, I feel like that was generated by the by the fans. Look at Preacher. You know? Look at Preacher. Yeah. And like, if you haven't read fin- Finished Preacher, and there might be a couple people who haven't mm-hmm. finished it yet, but like that, you know, is a book about heaven and hell, and like mm-hmm. that battle and everything like that. And ultimately, like your finale is a battle between two best friends. Yep. And mm-hmm. it's like it's something you never expect. It has an ending I never would have expected out of that type of book. It's about redemption. It ended it's, up being about redemption, and it know. just and it just nails it on mm-hmm. every piece of the storyline. Well, like the thing with Preacher that also. Um, because the runs are pretty much like the, like preacher, I think went up to like seventy four, seventy seven. Um, yeah. Boys is going to go into like seventy one or just seventy something like that. Um, well, it's at sixty five right now. They're saying they haven't officially set named uh, right a Last final issue. issue. So probably yeah, around that. So in in those seventy issues, you have uh, in both runs of both comics, you can make the parallel that um, a lot of those issues, like a lot of the single issues, were so dynamically done. Um, one of the issues that pops in my head is when. Jesse and Jesse and uh, Cassidy are in New York, mm. you know. And yeah, they, it's a classic and one. They yeah, get yeah. to the bar fight, and they end up going to the top of the Empire State Building. And then he's like, you know, like you know why? Um, like I can't get enough of this place. I can't get enough of New York. I can't. And like they're singing the Lauren Hardy song together, walking mm. down the street. You know, like it's stuff like that that I feel like a lot of writers don't really touch on. They'll mm. do like you're with a lot of characters. You're pigeonholed into writing them a certain way, right? And I feel like the beauty of his writing is that he takes it more to a personal level. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of humanity thrown in there. Not the best of what a person's supposed to be. But, right. You know, like, I'm a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. Let's have a beer. You well, know? look at look at what he did with Frank. I mean, yeah. like, that dude, like, is the one, one of the more inhuman characters you can write. Right. I mean, the dude is like a Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. You know, he is a guy who is, you know, I am built to, you know, murder people. Right. And he did such a master stroke of that, and you gave a shit, mm-hmm. and you invested every single time it came out. You wanted, you know, you right. root for the guy, and you were still emotionally invested. And you had those moments, like, you know, uh, when you read Preacher, it's like scene of killers. Yeah. You have those powerful, powerful moments where you're just like, wow. Also, another another beautiful thing about the dude's writing is the fact that this guy um, did not rely on the big one liner moments. You know, no, not which at all. a lot of writers tend to rely on. Even if you're writing serious stuff, I know there's like a lot of writers who will have that big like, you hit the jackpot tiger moment. You know, 
definitely not Garth Ennis. He was never one to have like somebody come and yell out like a like a catchphrase or anything like nope. that. It's just real, um, no real thought balloons. Just everything's on the page. Yeah, you man. He d- he's always asked. You could always do well with him. <laughs> Throw up. <laughs> well, you could always do well with the Garth Ennis yeah. book. There's very very rare moments where you you know mm-hmm. like you don't. I recommend almost his entire body of work. Red, recommend the entire body of work. Yeah, I recommend the entire body. Even work. Uh, even that Thor four issue Vikings. We always we talk about that. We always recommend that. I like that. One. We recommend it like yeah. crazy because creepy Glenn, uh, the Glenn, Glenn Favre drew it, and it was oh, just yeah. like so. Like his art style is so crazy. So good. <laughs> I I really am a big fan of of um, of um, of recommending like preacher again. Like I want to go back. To, like I recommended Walking Dead to so many people. Like I feel yeah. like I, it's time to go back to like go back to preacher. preacher. Preacher's always been my number one. Oh, it's so and, good. Uh, our, our mutual friend Adam is starting to read Preacher, and he's digging yeah. it. It, it 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 makes you want to watch westerns and World War Two movies. Yeah, dude, you know? they have some of the most likable characters you'll ever read. Mm-hmm. Even their bad guys are and tremendous. Some of the most despicable characters you'll ever read about. Yeah, yeah. that was that was a, mm-hmm. a, a true masterwork. That was yeah. like the anti Sandman. Yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely. You either like, if you're a big comic fan, you either rec- depending on what kind of fan you are, you'll recommend one or two one of two things. Maybe Sick. maybe three. The third one is uh, Giant of the Homicidal Maniac, Ugh. which I've heard people um, reference a million times. They're like, oh, you want to read comics? Check this out. You know, not us, buddy. So, all right. I guess that about wraps it up for tonight. Um, thank you all for joining us. We will be back next week with another episode of Behind the Counter and more hot talk. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, Rich Stambolian. Hodor. And good night.